What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Bush coming at you solo today to bring you the Matt Corral Tale of the Tape. If you guys are new around here, we run this Tale of the Tape series, basically diving into every rookie prospect that you guys are going to need to know about for Dynasty Fantasy rookie drafts and tell the whole story of that prospect from the beginning of their college career to the NFL draft process, the traits that they have, their rookie profile, height, weight, speed, all that kind of stuff is included in this video today. If you guys are interested in more rookie content, we have tons of it over on Patreon. We have our player cards available, rookie rankings, all that kind of stuff is available on our Patreon. So if you guys are interested in that, link is in the description. Our Dynasty Rankings Manifesto has our top 36 rookie rankings for Superflex. For one quarterback leagues, we also have our Dynasty quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end overall rankings, our bucketed rankings by age, and uh, tons of other stuff, top 100s for Superflex and one quarterback startups as well. So if you're interested, Dynasty Rankings Manifesto available in the description. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy this video. Now let's hit the intro. Right. Matt Corral, quarterback of the Mississippi Rebels, age 23.1 years old, six foot one and a half, six foot two, 212 pounds. Those are official measurements from the NFL Scouting Combine, as well as his pro day. Basic information, high school measurements, you know, brief overview of the player and his production. We have a four star recruit out of Long Beach, California. He was the number four overall pro style quarterback in the 2018 recruiting class, just behind five star recruits Trevor Lawrence and JT Daniels in that class, and then another guy that you've never heard of. Over his career at Ole Miss, he played there for four years. His freshman year, XFL legend Jordan Tiamu was the starting quarterback there, but Corral got his first real starting action in 2020 when he uh, finally took over the starting job as a uh, redshirt sophomore. He flourished alongside FSE darling Elijah Moore, who you guys know we were very high on last year, still are very high on for Dynasty Fantasy Football purposes. Great season in his first full year starting in 2020, 337 passing yards per game, 10.2 yards per attempt. Bit of an issue with turnovers though, 29 to 14 touchdown to interception ratio, but still quite solid for Matt Corral as a first year starter in 2020. Coming into the season this year, I expected Matt Corral to solidify himself as the number one quarterback in this class. He was my quarterback one coming into the season. And without a doubt, I thought, you know, this is going to be the quarterback one top two overall pick, you know, Detroit Lions are going to take this guy at number two overall, but he had a down season, much like Sam Howell, who I've talked about already, who is my current quarterback one. His number one guy, Elijah Moore, goes off to the NFL. He starts to struggle in his 2021 campaign. This season without Elijah Moore, he you know regressed from a yards per attempt perspective, yards per game, but he did improve his decision-making. Only five interceptions this season just dealt with regression from the big plays, which is going to happen when you have a stud like Elijah Moore go off to the NFL. So I, if you guys are new around here, if this is the first episode of Tale of the Tape that you're watching for quarterbacks, I have six fundamental traits that I scout for the quarterback position. I'll just give a brief overview of the trait, why it's important, how we can quantify it, and who best exemplifies it in the NFL is a picture that you'll see on the screen as I'm talking. Number one is accuracy, right? You have to be an accurate passer. That's anything from ball placement to your mechanics, to your accuracy, throwing off platform, all that kind of stuff goes into accuracy. Uh, Matt Corral is a very rhythm passer, I, I would say. The way I would describe him is a rhythm passer. When he gets flustered and under pressure, his mechanics often suffer a little bit, but overall the right system will be a perfect fit for Corral's ability to get the ball out quick, get the ball out on time and make uh, you know accurate throws on the move and deep downfield. He's kind of like Zach Wilson. Right? If you think of Matt Corral, spoiler alert, my comparison for him is Zach Wilson. I'll get to that later in the video, but he has that Zach Wilson quality in his throwing motion where he has that quick twitch flick throwing motion. That was the you know intriguing part of Zach Wilson last year where he had, you know, very unique arm. Some of the issues in the accuracy department come from his ball placement. If you guys, you know, think he's not an accurate passer, ch chances are you're probably talking about his ball placement. Like here, where you guys can see him floating a pass to Elijah Moore downfield. Instead of leading him away from the safety, he leads him towards the safety. He takes a big hit as a result of that. Among the top quarterbacks, though, Matt Corral's career catchable pass rate over the course of his collegiate career at Ole Miss, ranked second only to Carson Strong at 85.1%. So he was more accurate in terms of his catchable throws than a guy like Sam Howell. He was more accurate than Malik Willis, more accurate than Kenny Pickett, more accurate than Desmond Ritter. So he struggled with errant throws in 2021. You're going to see a lot more errant throws this season than you saw in 2020, but he currently has the highest accuracy grade for me among the top quarterbacks that I've, uh, I've scouted so far. I have not scouted Desmond Ritter, and I probably won't scout Carson Strong unless he gets you know very high draft capital, which I don't anticipate happening. Between him, Howell, Willis, and Pickett, he has the highest grade 
in the accuracy category for me. So uh, he does check that box for me more so than the other quarterbacks because the on-time rhythm-based passer that he is, he is much more accurate than those other guys. Number two, arm talent, right? Obviously, arm talent matters because big plays is how we uh, you know, get a lot of fantasy points. And we really, really like big plays, uh, which, you know, if you look at the top quarterbacks in Dynasty right now, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, all these dudes have cannons for arms and can make big plays at the drop of a hat. I underestimated Matt Corral's uh, arm going in a little bit. I, I will admit, I, I didn't think Matt Corral had as good of an arm as I initially saw uh, from just watching college football. But uh, when I actually dug into the tape, I, I realized that he has a pretty good arm and his arm strength and ability to make plays off schedule is like a B plus version of what Zach Wilson represented last year. I don't think he has as good of an arm as Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson for my money probably has a top 10 arm in the NFL. When you talk about strength, uh, arm talent, ability to throw on the move. Of course, we all saw the pro day throw that Zach Wilson threw uh, last year when he was coming out. Corral's arm doesn't have huge, huge velocity numbers, I would say, but his arm is comparable maybe do a guy like Tua Tungavailoa. If you're just talking strictly from an arm talent perspective, Tua Tungavailoa versus Matt Corral is probably pretty comparable. Maybe Corral edges him out quite uh, just a little bit there. 5.2% big time throw rate over the course of his career is a very solid number, uh, but it still ranks behind the likes of Malik Willis, who's up near 9%, and Sam Howell up near 7% all over the course of their career. So he probably has the third best arm of the top quarterbacks in this class, but uh, those other two guys have very good arms. So I don't want to knock that against Matt Corral too much. You'll see uh, back-to-back plays here of Matt Corral making throws completely off platform, right? Completely on the run, thrown against his body in some of these throws, and especially this throw against Alabama. He doesn't have his feet set here. He's moving to his left, feet not set, throws it all the way downfield, 60 yards or so in the air, uh, and he gets it to his receiver, and his receiver just drops it. So uh, basically, Matt Corral did everything he could on that play. Great, you know, big play that he could have made, and if Elijah Moore is uh, downfield on that throw, he's catching that thing, and that's what kind of the difference between this year, the big play regression is that he didn't have Elijah Moore out there. And uh, presumably in the NFL, he's going to have a lot better talent around him. So he's got plenty to work with in this department of arm talent. Now we get into mobility. Obviously, this is the Konami code factor. If you guys play fantasy football, you know that mobility is very, very important for fantasy scoring because it is worth you know, mathematically more than passing production. You get more points for rushing yards, more points for rushing touchdowns in a four point per passing touchdown league. The important thing is that he rushed for 600 yards in 2020 and four touchdowns. And he rushed for 750 yards and 11 touchdowns this season. So similar to Sam Howell, without Elijah Moore in the fold for Matt Corral, he was forced to make a little bit more uh, happen with his legs. And uh, that's what we saw from Sam Howell at North Carolina when he lost all of his guys as well. So he can run similar to what we saw with a guy like Zach Wilson last year, a guy like Trevor Lawrence last year. They had intriguing mobility, but they're not the dual threat quarterback types that we saw last year with Trey Lance, with Justin Fields, or what we see this year with Malik Willis and, and to some extent Sam Howell as well. Um, but he can run and he will provide some kind of rushing floor for fantasy. Once he gets to the NFL, you can see a number of clips here of Matt Corral making plays with his legs. I've seen a lot of scouts say that Matt Corral takes a lot of unnecessary hits and he won't hold up at the NFL level as a runner. But I feel like those opinions are based, based on the fact that Corral was listed at six foot two, two Oh five on old Miss's website before the season or during the season. And then once we got official measurements on him, his measurements came in better than that. So when you look at six, two, two Oh five, that is a little bit of a slender build, but he came in at six, one and a half two twelve. So his BMI is actually better than Kenny Pickett, who's six foot three, two seventeen. And Trevor Lawrence last year, who was six foot six almost, two hundred and thirteen pounds. So his BMI is not a, a concern for me. I don't think he's really that slender. I didn't see that issue with him, but Daniel Jeremiah's and guys like that seem to think that he won't hold up at the next level. They make a lot more money than I do. So I'll let them, you know, think that. But I, I personally think his, you know, frame is a little bit overblown. And I do think he's gonna learn what kind of hits he can and can't take at the next level 76 pff rushing grade fourth in the class this year 67.2 pff elusiveness rating over the course of his career which is about twice as good as desmond ritters as well as third in the quarterback class behind malik willis and behind sam Howell. so this is a dude that can run was pretty effective at running as you guys can see his rushing epa per play among notable quarterbacks the best quarterback that's you know been charted in the last like 10 years or so in terms of rushing uh, expected points added per play was Marcus Mariota, but you can see that uh, Matt Corral in 2020, his really, really good season was seventh on that list. So this is a dude that can run. He was a better and more effective runner than Patrick Mahomes, guy uh, comparable to Justin Herbert. And like I said, Sam Howell and Malik Willis also on that list as well. Number four is efficiency. And this basically comes with creating positive plays and limiting negative plays. Are you an asset to your team? Are you turning the ball over constantly? Are you getting first downs, getting you know touchdowns and scoring drives going? 
Matt Corral has a red flag on his profile in this area because he did play in a very quarterback friendly scheme with a lot of RPOs, a lot of scripted throws, a lot of play action, all that kind of stuff goes into why Matt Corral should be successful, basically, because most quarterbacks will be in a, in a quarterback friendly scheme. It's like playing for the San Francisco 49ers, for example. And how does that affect his versatility if he goes to a downfield passing scheme like Tampa Bay in the draft? Is he limited to an RPO type of system or is he more scheme versatile? That's a question mark that you have to have about Matt Corral because he played in that kind of scheme. But regardless, when it comes to moving the offense, making the right decisions, the one thing that Corral was better at in 2021, as I talked about, was decision-making. In 2020, he threw 14 interceptions, cut his interceptions from 14 to five, and his turnover-worthy play rate, which is a metric by PFF, 3.8% in 2020 to 1.8% in 2021. So this was a guy making a lot better decisions, matured as a player. His reads got a little bit better. He wasn't testing safeties as much downfield, which I noticed on his 2020 tape, like I mentioned with that Elijah Moore throw. His ability to move the offense is great. His EPA per play based on his age is hovering around the average for top 12 quarterbacks, as you guys can see on the screen. And as you guys know, Sam Howell is my quarterback one. He and Matt Corral were pretty much the best two quarterbacks in this class when it comes to age adjusted expected points added per play. So they were more efficient than these other quarterbacks that are getting, you know, first round hype. Because, you know, if you ask most people in the draft community, Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett, they're expected to be the top two quarterbacks off the board. But for my money, these two quarterbacks are probably the best two in the class. So his other efficiencies are quite solid as well. If you look at his yards per attempt over the course of his college career, 94th percentile yards per attempt, 95th percentile quarterback rating over the course of his career as well. Very, very solid efficiency numbers from Matt Corral. Now, number five, is playmaking and beat passing. A theme with this quarterback class that I've kind of seen so far is that all of these top quarterbacks are good at making plays out of structure. And that's not something you could have said about Mac Jones last year and, and maybe quarterbacks in previous classes, but you'll see a number of clips of Mac Corral evading pressure, climbing out of the pocket basically, and making something out of nothing. He seems most comfortable when he's on the move and when he's able to scramble outside of the pocket, similar to what we saw from Zach Wilson last year, his career yards per attempt of 6.29 on the move is actually third behind Malik Willis and Sam Howell in this class. When it comes to the deep game, his 13.3% deep pass percentage, so the total percentage of his total attempts that are downfield, is actually the lowest among the top quarterbacks. So that kind of goes back to the fact that he ran a lot of simplistic concepts, RPO type of scheme, quick throws, all that kind of stuff. So this is not a guy that was you know asked to move the ball downfield a whole lot in college, but when he was asked to do it in 2020, he actually had the highest adjusted completion percentage in the class in 2020 In 2021 struggled a little bit more, but in 2020, he was very good as a deep passer. So that's something to, you know, keep in mind with Matt Corral. He can do this, uh, you know, piece of his game and, and deep passing, but he wasn't asked to do it a tremendous amount, especially in 2021. Number six is handling pressure. The final fundamental trait for quarterbacks um, for fantasy purposes is how they can handle pressure because in the NFL, everybody gets bigger, they get faster, they get stronger, and they're trying to gun you down in the pocket and his pocket presence, as I mentioned, is a big time strength for him. His ability to manipulate the pocket, climb the pocket, I would say is probably the most developed assets of Matt Corral's game because he looks like a pro style quarterback when he's doing it. And it's also much more ahead of uh, Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett in this area, who I think their worst traits are their ability to navigate pressure. And I think Matt Corral, at least from a mechanical standpoint, is much more ahead of those guys. Sometimes he tends to stay in the pocket a little bit too long and not escape quick enough, which is almost the opposite of what Kenny Pickett does. And in 2020, Matt Corral ranked second only to Sam Howell with 8.9 yards per attempt versus pressure. But that number dropped from 8.9 to 5.3 in 2021. 20, uh, so the biggest drop off that I saw this year was when Matt Corral was pressured, he was not nearly as good as he was in 2020. And again, that probably comes with not having your number one guy. And Elijah Moore was a big time savior for him when he was under pressure in 2020. Not having that dude, who's obviously a stud who we've seen in the NFL, um, it definitely is going to hurt him. So hopefully he goes to a situation where he has a number one guy that he can rely on under pressure. Overall, though, very similar to Sam Howell. I said pretty much the same thing about Sam Howell under pressure because he was very good in 2020. Like I said, very, very high yards per attempt for Sam Howell in 2020. Then he lost all of his dudes, all of his go-to guys, Deami Brown, uh, you know, the running backs and Daz Newsom wasn't nearly as good under pressure, just like Matt Corral. So when we get into the intangibles, some of the red flags, personality stuff that we know about him, again, I can't sit down with Matt Corral. I'm not an NFL scout, so I don't know what his personality actually is. But based on what I know about Matt Corral, some scouts knock him for his size. I personally don't give a fuck. I don't really care that he's a slender frame and then he runs too physical or whatever. I like to see that from quarterbacks. If you're going to run the ball, you better be physical. You better be uh, tough. You better be competitive. And that's what he does well. He's going to learn to not take so many big hits. Once he takes one that actually hurts in the NFL, 
he's probably going to limit that part of his game and start sliding and stuff like that. So six foot two, 212 pounds by no means is a guy that is too slender to hold up in the NFL. From when we saw a five foot nine quarterback go first overall, when we saw Baker Mayfield go first overall at six foot, when we saw Zach Wilson just last year pick second overall, who's a similar size profile to Matt Corral, I really don't give a hell about his size. Personality and mentality wise, I love what I've seen from Matt Corral. He played in his bowl game to have one last hurrah with his college teammates. It shows you what kind of leader he is. And obviously, it's it cost him because he hurt his ankle in that game. But just the fact that he played in his bowl game, which is by no means a requirement, nobody would have knocked him for sitting out that game. The fact that he wanted to play his final game with his college teammates shows what kind of leader he is. Like I said, and the ankle injury that he suffered in that game seems just fine. I'm not concerned about it. He is good to go. He was throwing at his pro day. I expect him to be ready for his NFL career. He plays tough. He plays competitive through and through. I really like what I've seen from him from an intangibles perspective as well. Final grades. This is where we you know, get down to the brass tacks of what this player is. I grade players on a scale of 1,100. 870 is how Matt Corral scored. This makes him my pre-draft quarterback two. Behind Sam Howell is my quarterback one, but two and a half points ahead of Malik Willis is my quarterback three. But those top three guys are the guys that I can rationalize taking in the first round of the NFL draft. I don't think any of them belong to go number two overall or number six overall to the Panthers or anything like that. I think these are mid first, late first round type of quarterback prospects. They're not as good as last year's class, but I do think they're first round caliber quarterbacks at the back end of the round. Best traits for Matt Corral, obviously pocket presence, like I talked about, playmaking, arm talent, intangibles, efficiency, and accuracy. And then his worst traits, the fact that he had a down 2021 season versus pressure and accuracy specifically, and his scheme aided him and his decision-making to some extent was a problem for him early in his college career. Pro comparisons kind of spoiled it a million times throughout this video, but my pro comparison for Matt Corral is Zach Wilson. From a stylistic standpoint, I just see it. Zach Wilson last year, you guys know how much I love Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson was my quarterback too in last year's class. Still a guy that I have ranked very highly in dynasty leagues. Zach Wilson was a schoolyard, comfortable out of the pocket type of passer, like what Matt Corral is. Where Zach Wilson, who was my quarterback two last year, like I said, with a mid first round grade was better than Matt Corral was the fact that he was a lot better versus pressure. His accuracy downfield was absolutely elite and his decision-making was a lot better as well. And his arm is a bit better as well. So that's where those two guys differ, but overall pretty similar prospects. In my opinion, the size throwing style competitiveness, that all reminds me of Zach Wilson. Like I said, he's B plus version of what Zach Wilson was as a prospect in terms of best fits scheme team and fantasy uh, Corral's projected draft capital is somewhat of a, mer- a mystery right now because he wasn't at the senior bowl. He wasn't, you know, doing much at the combine. I think we're going to start seeing Matt Corral's name creep up in the mock draft discussion. We're going to start seeing him sneak into the back end of the first round again, because he was largely a forgotten man for a while because he wasn't doing anything in the, in the pre-draft process where Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis was doing everything. So that's where his name kind of got lost in the shuffle. I think we're going to start to see both Howell and Corral's names resurface because there was uh, a lot of uncertainty surrounding their draft position. But I think we're going to get some clarity in that area. If Corral can go to a, a team like Detroit or a team like New Orleans with good talent and good protection around them, then I love his outlook. I think he's going to be very, very good for fantasy and for real life. Maybe he could sit behind a guy like Tom Brady in Tampa Bay for a year. I personally would like if Matt Corral went to us and I pick 27, if there's no other you know offensive lineman or whatever on the board as a Tampa Bay fan, I think both him and Sam Howell would be good fits behind Tom Brady. As far as rookie drafts are concerned for fantasy purposes, I think he's going to go round one sometime. If he goes in the first round, at the end of the first round, whatever the case is in the actual NFL draft, then I'm very comfortable using a back end first round pick in a super flex draft on Matt Corral. 109, 110, 111, 112. If you guys have a pick like that and you need a quarterback two or you need a quarterback three for your roster, I think I think Matt Corral is worth that pick if you guys need a quarterback for your team. I have him currently ranked as my 12th overall player in my super flex rankings uh, for rookies right now. In our rankings manifesto, if you go there, he is currently ranked as my 12th overall player. And that is mainly due to uncertainty surrounding his draft capital. I'll probably have him ranked as high as 108, 109, 110 if he gets top 20, top 25 draft capital in the NFL draft. So if you guys did enjoy this video, that is Matt Corral. That is everything that I have for you today. Hopefully you guys have a clear picture of Matt Corral heading into your super flex rookie drafts or your one quarterback rookie drafts coming up in the coming months. If you enjoyed this video, as always, leave a like, comment any of your thoughts down below, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, we got tons of rookie content, tons of dynasty content. I dropped a video yesterday 
about, um, you know, mystery running back that I'm buying everywhere in dynasty leagues. It's gotten a lot of support. So if you haven't checked that one out already, go ahead and check that one out. Check out the other tale of the tapes on the channel as well. If you want to learn about more of these rookie prospects. And if you guys are curious about our rookie rankings, like I said, Patreon link is in the description there. And you could also access them by signing up on underdog fantasy using promo code FSE. They have tons of contests going on right now. Super flex, big board drafts. NHL playoff best balls, tons more. So sign up using our code and you will get our rookie rankings totally for free and all of our dynasty rankings for that matter. So peace out. I'll talk to you soon.